Welcome back to episode 10. My name's Levi from Paper Planes Game. Let's go ahead and get into this one. Before we do anything, uh, I've already textured this once and we're just going to make a variation of it, but we'll do it completely from scratch. And we'll go through real quick to see what I've got. And we're going to keep it similar, motors, things like that. We'll change some colors up and some other parameters so we can have a, a few extra variations in the game so they don't all look exactly the same. So we can just go through and just check a couple of the items that we're doing. It's pretty simple, uh, texturing in the teeth and everything for our gears. And just trying to get it all kind of uniform. Uh, this one will actually do a little bit different coloring. And then uh, in the game, I'll probably make three or four different versions. And then whenever they spawn into the game, they'll have a random set as to what uh, texture they'll use. So like I said on the few of them, we're not going to really use a whole lot of text and stuff because you're really not going to see it while you're flying by, but I just wanted to add these in just to give it a little bit of, you know, a little pizzazz. Let's move on to the next one here. So basically we're just going to keep it very similar, change a couple of the, change a couple of the texture colors, maybe some of the parameters on where the scratches and stuff are, things like that. And let's go ahead and jump into it and start getting it done. So uh, before I was talking about the texture IDs, the coloring that we did in Blender, and all you have to do is go to your materials, go down to your IDs just to see them. We're probably not going to use that very much. Um, sometimes you can actually just set up uh, vertex groups and rename them in Blender, and then you can have smaller items and things like that, where you can just click on it and change to whatever texture you want it to be. I'm going to do a little bit more hard-headed approach. I like to actually just work through the UVs, just the way I've gotten used to doing it. So, but I guess we're going to go ahead and start right away. Just get this uh, tire completely nailed, and then we'll start working on some of the other parts. Since we've already done the tire once before, this will be pretty easy for us. So we're going to go to tire, and we're actually going to use the motorbike tread for the tire. Let's go ahead and scale that where we want it make sure we have all the parameters the way we want them to be and for some reason there's actually a really nasty little seam here that's on the texture itself so you can actually just move that out to the edge so you don't see it then get it lined up the way you want it. So we have that set up pretty much the way we want it. Now we can just go ahead and see. This one's set up for us. Let's go ahead and put on a black mask. Uh, actually, no, we'll make a white mask. And that one. white mask and then we can go in with our paint tool click on our mask grab our colors and we'll go ahead and just paint off this bottom edge here so let's get a little bit better lighting here and we're gonna want this to be as soft as we can get it just click on it there hold down shift and run it right across that bottom edge. We'll do the top edge as well. And that'll give us a nice little bevel there. And then we can just go ahead and knock everything else out. Uh, we'll just grab the selection tool, grab everything we don't want. And pull all that out. Alright, so now we just have that middle piece there, and we can go ahead and grab our vulcanized rubber and drop that one on. That'll pull everything together the way it should be. And we can go ahead and add a mask to that. We'll do a white mask. And then we can just take out all of the parts for the rim. 
this one, all of these, pull these out as well. Uh, not that one. And we'll grab all these. So that's our rim basically set up there. Uh, missing one right there. All right. And now we can just go with the paint. So basically the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to go ahead and drop a metal texture on there. We'll do something a little beat up. Let's see. Let's try this steel. Yeah, that'll... That's a little too dark. Let's go with something a little more bright. So I'm going to grab... Uh, let's see. Let's use this iron rough. That works. And now we can just go ahead and copy the texture that we have here. Go onto our top. Paste that texture and then just invert it. And now you have just these parts here, but we have it also still on this tire. So we are going to want to get rid of everything that's on the tire. Oh, no, it didn't put it on the tire. I guess I had that off after all. That works. So now, as you can see, we just have kind of a shiny metal in there. Uh, I'm not really going to add... I'm only going to use this for the curvature. I'm not going to really add uh, any rust or anything to this, because that's going to actually be on my paint layer. So I already have a paint that I want to use. And this will be the spray-painted metal. Like so. And we can just go ahead and copy this layer. Or this mask and paste this mask here so we have the same one and that'll just be on our rim area uh, we will be cutting out the bolts or we may just keep the bolts the way they are and add rust to them I'm not totally sure what I want to do there yet those we will add rust to uh, to differentiate them but for right now let's go ahead and just set up our colors here for the rim and try and find something we like. Kind of like a little bit of a creamy color for the rim. Something about like that. And we can play a little bit with our texture set here and see what we like. See if we can find something exciting. All right, so if you look inside the rim here, you can see we have a little bit of a seam where we cut it away right on this edge right there. And I don't really want that, so we're going to go ahead and change the UV projection to triplanar. And that usually gets rid of all the seaming. This one doesn't really matter too much. We'll just make sure we get a little bit of rust or something there. But for the most part, all the rest of them are gone. And let's go ahead and play with some of the parameters and see what we can get. So um, we got our paint roughness. And I like to kind of bring up the variation a little bit so we get some nice and shiny and some flat spots all in, all over the place in a random variation. So if we get our roughness down, you can see it's very shiny. And if we put our roughness up, we get a real flat color. So I keep it about here. And then you can change your, so here it's completely shiny all around. And then you put your variation up a bit. Just gives a little bit of flat dull spots. Don't want it that high though. And your airbrush intensity will just kind of give it little drips. And you can uh, change the direction of those. Uh, we're not actually going to use the airbrush intensity on this. The drips we're going to take out completely also. But we are going to put up the peeling paint and you can see we'll start getting some pretty cool little effects there and right now all the peels are a little bit smaller than I like so we can just go back up I actually change this a little bit to be a little bit smaller so we can just bring it up a little get some larger peel areas just like that and if you don't have the peel in the way you want 
since it's on triplanar and basically there's uh, three planes here, one in the middle, one cut here, and then one cut down the horizontal, you can actually move them around a bit and kind of get them where you want them to be. So we're going to move this one a little bit and see if we can get a little bit of, there we go, let's pull this out like this. And we can bring our quality back down because we don't want that much uh, big holes like so. All right, so one thing I am going to want to do, though, is I am going to want to change the sublayer paint color. So this is uh, basically like a primer or something underneath. And I'm going to actually make it to more of a rust color. Which will be a little brighter than you would expect, but something about like that. And let me see if I can get rid of that one hole there yeah that'll work yeah i don't want too much i just want to look like it's uh, a little bit beat up but not you know ridiculous so from there we can go ahead and grab this one here what i'm gonna do is i'm going to group it you can just click on your layer Control g to make a group out of it and then we'll add a mask to it we'll do a black mask and from the black mask we'll do a generator. So the generator is going to use the material IDs, the channels here that we did earlier for world space, normal. We're going to be using the curvature right now because we're going to actually add the edge wear. And right down here we can select metal edge. And right now we have it backwards so let's just go ahead and click invert there and that'll give us our edging. Right on this seams here and then we can just play around with it and kind of get it where we want it. So I'm actually going to want to bring down the wear level, bring up the contrast a little bit, and I'm going to start using the grunge because I want more scratches and stuff, not just on the edges. And when we pull up our grunge, we'll start getting them a little more randomly around like this which is more what I'm looking for. So I just put the grunge scale all the way down so that it's bigger. So if you go here, your grunge, let's uh, pull the grunge all the way up. And you can see the size of the grunge texture itself. Bring the grunge scale down, you just get bigger, larger open areas, which is what I'm looking for. So let's bring our grunge back down a bit. Actually, not quite that big, about like that. And we gotta bring our wear back down. Yeah, I want it to be pretty worn. So we can use our contrast uh, for the edges of the grunge and the edges of the where it's stripped away and we can just make them feathered out more so it looks more like a subtle scratch or pulling it all the way up you get like more hard edge like chipped paint which is what we want but I don't want to go quite that high and we'll go ahead and just move our curvature weight down a little bit so we're not getting all of the edge all the way around because when we were all the way up the way I have it set we have a Everything is just shiny and we don't really want that. So we're going to move that down a bit just to make sure that it's right on the edge. We'll bring our grunge down just a little bit more still. And maybe not quite so hard on those edges. Perfect. So that'll work for us. I mean, as soon as we put in some dust in here to make everything even out, then it'll completely change everything. Uh, only thing right now, I'm just not totally sold on the color. Let's go ahead and redo that a little bit. I like these creamier colors, but I don't... There we go. That's better. So for most of this stuff, it's like industrial kind of thing. I just kind of like look for pastel kind of colors. I don't go really super saturated like way over here because then it just gets too, uh, too bright for this kind of item. So I try and keep it in the gray side here so we're doing about right there that looks perfect 
Awesome. So let's go ahead and uh, let's just go ahead, I guess, and work from the bottom up. Let's go ahead and do the base. So the base is pretty simple. We're going to do basically the same thing. We can actually go back to our uh, tire. Uh, we're done with the tires. There we go. And I'm just going to grab this iron rough. Control C. And then we'll go up to our base. And we'll just drop that one right in with Control V. So that'll give us our metal texture that we're going to use. All the way around here. And we got to get rid of the... We're going to have to get rid of pretty much everything here. Delete that. Grab this one here and go ahead and remove the mask so we get it on everything. And let's see if Triplaner will give us better results. And Triplaner really works well, but sometimes on curved items it'll give you kind of like a little bit of a weird artifact like right where it starts curving but that actually looks really good we'll leave that like that and let's go ahead and make this metal a little bit darker awesome now, if you are using these uh, on one item here, you can actually instantiate them across and then just use this one texture for all the metal on everything. But this one texture here would actually control all the metals on everything. So if you change any parameters, it's going to change all the metal on everything. So I'm actually going to copy and paste because I am going to change the metals just a little bit depending on what item it is because some things will be a little bit different. Like these will be more like a pewter. These will be more like a steel, and I don't want uh, the settings to be the same across the board, so that's why I just copy and paste it. And right now we're going to go ahead and let's add our paint. So we're going to do the same as last time. We're going to use the spray painted metal. And I just like the spray painted metal because it's just a little bit cleaner and this... I do have some other ones that are more, you know, larger... Uh, holes and a lot more rust and stuff but this just gives it kind of like a homemade somebody spray can painted it kind of look and you even have a couple different colored drips here and stuff uh, which i will probably take out but if you wanted it it's there so let's go ahead and get a color on this one i'm actually going to do this one more like a pastel teal color something about like that for a little added variation from the last one we had because the last one we had uh if i still have it here i can pull up i do not i did that one more like an army green and this one i just want to give something else let's uh take a look and see what we can do here let's try this one on triplaner as well just to see if we get any weird edging which there's not any really heavy curves so we shouldn't get too much uh, but whenever you get into things like this where it's small and curved, you can actually see a lot of... You can see a little bit here, actually. So we had this one triplanar. And there's a part right there that was starting to show up. And this is the edging of the triplane. And it tries to uh, kind of mask the two together with a little bit of a gradient. And you can actually see where it kind of fades out. This is not too bad. I actually moved it around the way I wanted it so that we wouldn't have too much of that. Like here's one as well. So this would probably grow out into a much bigger part, but since it's triplaned, it cuts it off with a fade. So you just want to kind of be a little bit mindful of that when you're using triplaner. And this I think is going to work just fine. Let's go ahead and start messing with some of the parameters here. All right, so we have our color that we want. Let's bring our variations up a little bit. And let's move our sun around a little so we can see what that looks like. Looks pretty good to me. Take the airbrush out. The drips intensity, intensity out, because I don't want that. So you have uh, down here the dots quantity. So we have all these little dots. 
where it looks like drip paint from another color. We can go ahead and pull all those out. And we also have the dripped paint quantity. We can pull that as well. So that'll just get rid of that. Because I, I, I do like that, but it just doesn't quite fit uh, what I'm going for here. So we have our coloring in there. Let's go ahead up and change the quantity for how much uh, holes and stuff we're going to get in it. We also have a hair slider here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to use too much of that because it will add little hairs in, but I'm kind of using this fairly large. If I were to scale it down a little bit, it'll look more, you know, in the size it should, kind of like that. Which I guess that's okay. We can just bring the hairs down a little. Just give them one or two here and there. Not that you're ever going to see this in what I'm doing, but this is just so you know how to do it. So let's bring that hair down a little. We get one here and there. And now we can just go ahead and start messing with the peel. So let's pull up our peeling paint quantity and see what we can get. Let's back up a bit. So here's where we're going to try and figure out how the triplaner is going to work for us. And it actually does look pretty good. Just like that. Might be a little too much. That's too clean. Let's bring up the... I'm just bringing up the edges a little bit so it looks like they're peeled up higher. And let's bring down the quantity a bit. I think that's too much. That's not enough. I do want it to look like it's been kind of used. We may actually have to bring the tiling size back down a little. And let's go ahead and try that again. Yeah, that'll probably do. Whoops. That'll probably do right about there. Because we're going to also add in the edge wear and the grunge on top of this one as well. So we don't need it with huge holes everywhere. We just want to make it look like there's a couple spots. We actually might go a little less. I like that. And once again, I'm going to go ahead down to the sublayer paint color. And I don't need it to be white like a primer. I actually want to go ahead and make these kind of consistent and just give it a rusty color. Which you're going to want to go a little bit more to the red than the orange. Just to make it pop a little. Auto save, eh. Yeah, that should work for us. Alright, so here's where the triplaner is doing its thing. You can see where it's fading in that one, and I'm not a fan. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back to the UV and see if I can get it a little bit better. Alright. Yeah, I like that. Oh yeah. Okay, I think we can do that. So we're going to be cutting these out anyway, because these are going to be rubber. So that's the rubber feet. So we can probably just go ahead and do that right now. Um, actually, no, we'll, we'll do that. Yeah, let's go ahead and just do that. Let's go to a white mask, and we'll just grab all these. Oops. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, let's get you. Let's pull all these out. And we got this one here we didn't want. Let's go and find the rest. Make sure we have everything there. And we... Not we have to get the strips. I believe that that's these right here. Oh, 
I believe so. Let me see. left alone. Let's get this last one. Alright, that should do it for us. So now we have this one, we can just go ahead and copy these and paste it onto our other one. We can also grab our vulcanized rubber. Whoops. You too many E's there. Grab our vulcanized rubber, go ahead and drop it on there. And then we can just, uh, we're actually gonna move this one to the bottom. We can just grab any of these, copy the paste, uh, copy the mask, paste the mask, and it works. Like so, and now we have our rubber feet, which works for me. Uh, we might actually bring up, let me see what the texture size looks like. It's not too bad. Let's go ahead and here and just pull down the, see if we can get a little more variation in the rubber there. Yeah, I like that. Perfect. So we have all our colors set up. Um, we have this teal base color here. Let's go ahead and finish that up. So now we have our iron rough and our spray painted metal. Just gonna grab our spray painted metal, make that a group. I'm going to add a mass to it. Add a generator. And on the generator we're going to go ahead and add our edge wear. And we're going to invert it just like last time. So we have our nice edges there. And this one's actually pretty good but I do want to bring up the contrast a bit so it's just a little bit harder edge like chipping paint instead of fading. Bring this down a little bit so we got a nice edging there. And we'll start playing with our grunge. And we'll bring our grunge up a little bit. I just want it to go a little bit across. Actually, I think that's too much contrast. I just want to go a little bit across in some spots. Like so. Alright, I think that'll work for us. So in my previous one, I actually had a lot more rust and a lot more holes. This one I'm just going to make a little bit cleaner, make the metal edging a little bit smoother. Not too much uh, variation there. I might change the metal a little bit though. I might do a different, yeah. That's a little bit too bright for me. So let's go back to our, let's uh, take a look at our metals and see what we got. Yeah, we have something like this die cast iron, which will give us a little bit more rust, which is probably what we'll use for this area here. You know what, let's go ahead and drop it on and see what it looks like. So with the die, crust, uh, die cast iron, we can actually get a little bit more. Let me grab this. Let's... Uh, Go ahead and copy this mask and paste it so we just get it where we want it. So yeah, it gives a little bit more variation, but we have a little bit more tools in the metal itself for adding 
uh, Rust and stuff like that with all of its variation. Um, yeah, let's keep the variation kind of high. That's fine. Dirt, I don't worry about. You got your metal aging, so you get it a little bit darker, which I really like that. So we might actually do that. And we have our rust. You can make it crazy rust. And you can see the rust peeling under the paint. Or we can take the rust out completely. And I think we're actually just going to put a little bit. And let it give a little bit in some spots. Not too much. About like that. Yeah, I don't want it to be super overpowering. Uh, actually, I think that might actually be a little too much. Let's bring it back a little more like that. Yeah, I like that. And we can also do scratches and things like that. You're not really going to see it too much since we're only using the edge, so I'm not going to mess with that too much. And I think... I think that'll do it for us, but I might bring the edge down just a little bit more so it's not quite so dark. About like that. Oh yeah, I'm a fan of that. So, whenever we get done with all this and we add in our dirt texture, our dirt mask, it'll bring all these pieces together really, really well. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just grab all these, control C on those, and then we'll go up to our uh, turret top and control V. And then we can just move these around and get them where we want and uh, add in the color a little bit. Uh, let's uh, Let's go ahead and remove these masks. So let's remove that one. And that one. And... Oh, uh, yeah. I have to get rid of this one as well. Let's just make this a white mask. Like so. So it's all covered. And remove that mask as well. Alright. Let's go back to our generator. Add our edge wear generator. Invert. There we go. Alright, that works for us. That just uh, I'm just using the same parameters on this one. Since these pieces are about the same size, I just want to kind of keep them a little bit together. Uh, this top will be a little bit more worn, but we will do that with our... So we have our spray painted metal. We're going to actually bring up the roughness on this, or the peel quality. Uh, where was that? Right here, the peel quantity. We'll bring this up and we'll just give it a little bit more larger variation spots. Uh, and we can actually move it around if we needed to. I'm pretty sure I had this on triplanar, did I? No, I didn't. So this is on UV only. Let's try triplanar and see what it looks like. Just to... Yeah. So we do have... Uh, that actually doesn't look that bad. So sometimes on the triplanar you'll get a spot here where it kind of looks a little weird where it's crossing from one plane to another and the only one I see that doesn't look great is right here mm. let's see if we can just no that's not the one we'll use this one we'll move that forward just to try and get rid of that one yeah this one's not too bad it's by the basket so you're really not going to see that much. So we have that. We're going to we're gonna add a little bit more on the metal edge on this one, though. The metal edge wear. So we can get in these seams right here. A little bit more. these kind of peeled away. That's a little much. Let's uh, bring 
slowing down the grunge. All right. Yeah, I wanted that right there where it's kind of uh, on these corners, uh, these curved corners. Let's see what we got here. You know, I'm actually um, probably going to want to bring down the wear level a bit. Yeah, a little bit like that. I don't want to get rid of everything, but uh, I do want this one to look a little more beat up. So I'm actually going to go the spray painted metal. I don't want this to be exactly the same color, just so it pops out a little bit more. So I am going to go ahead and change it. it we'll bring it down a little bit. Uh, maybe we'll make it a little more blue. Like this, just so it has a little bit of variation. It's not exactly the same color. That way it's a little easier to see this portion when it's rotating than this, and it doesn't. you can see where the separation is. So one thing I did, that I do want to do is I do have to deal with the edges here for our uh, gear and for this gear and uh, found a way I kind of like to do that let's just go ahead here we have our gear sections uh, I believe this is one of them let's go into our mask set a white mask go to black we'll take this out I'm pretty sure this is the one and it is so we'll pull all these out like so. And then this I do believe is the other side. Uh, let me see. We had that one and then we have this one here. for those. Oh. It's going to have a little bit. Oh, I cut this in two. Okay, that works. So it'll be both of these. So we can grab this one too. Just so we have all that taken off. And we're going to use that to add on to another mask also. Because I want this metal to be a little bit more shiny and a little bit more... Um... smoother kind of you know when you have two gears running together all the time with a lot of oil and stuff on them they kind of uh, stay pretty smooth so right now I'm just trying to figure out where this one is oh that's on the circle so that will be over here there it is all right so we can grab that one there let's go ahead and copy that mask and we're going to uh, let's get rid of this. Uh, let me see. The iron rough was smooth, correct? Yes. All right, so we're going to use the iron rough for this one. So we'll go to this one. We'll add in a mask. And this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add in a mask. But we're going to invert this one. So we're only affecting this ring that we were messing with. So we'll go here and invert. And now we have a nice shiny metal there. Just like so. And now to get our teeth, um, what I've found works well for me. Let's go back up here. I have a, uh, I believe it's under ribbed, yeah. All right, here we go. So I have my marble. These are stylized marbles. And they have ribbing on them. I do have a couple other items with ribs, and I have some that are uh, accordion style, and the accordion is just a little too sharp. And I like to actually use this one. This is my favorite one. And it just adds these little ridges. And we can uh, go ahead and... Let's go ahead and add our mask onto it. And invert it. Like so. And now we can just grab it and scale it down. 
to where we want it to be. I like that. So with that, we can also, because one of the things I do want to do is I want to take off this top ring. I don't want that top ring added. I only want it on the edge here. So we'll pull all this off the top ring. So we only get it on this edge. And then we can go back here and turn off color. And we just want to keep our height and our normal, like so. Now we can mess with some of the parameters just to get this to look a little more... Uh, the shape that we need it to be. We don't need any marble colors or anything. And we can use our ribbed amount and our rib size to get the shape that we're looking for for our gears. That'll probably do. I'm going to go ahead to our iron rough. That's this one, I believe. Yep. Let's go ahead and do it a little bit less roughness so it's nice and shiny. There we go. That'll definitely work. And we'll just copy and paste that one for all the rest of our uh, gears that we're going to be setting up. I may... Ah, no. That looks fine. Alright, that'll definitely work for us. And go back to you. Alright, yeah, we will leave it there. Alright, that works. So that'll pretty much conclude that section there. We don't really need uh, much more there. So now I'm going to go ahead and tackle. Let's go ahead and tackle this front barrel. And head on to this one. Grab our barrel here. And let's get our metal in. This one I am going to use. I'm going to use two metals. I'm going to use the pure, and I'm going to use the probably use the die cast iron. All right. So this is pretty much just going to be for the gears. Uh, we're going to make this part plastic, and the gears itself I want two because I want it to be a nice smooth metal, but I want the edges to be a little bit more rough. So I can use the die cast and I can just go ahead and add a mask to it and add a generator to it. And from there we can add our metal edge wear just to give it a rougher edge around with a little bit darker color. And then the rest of this will be a nice, uh, a nice shinier metal. So one of the things I do want to do though is I want to bring the contrast down and go ahead and bring the wear level down too. I just want this to be subtle just so it gives it a dark edge. That's pretty much all I'm looking for is the dark edge, which when we when we add dust on it, it's going to make that pop quite a bit. And that I think will do for us. Maybe add a little more grunge. See what happens. Yeah, I like that. Uh, do we have any of these on? Let me see. No. No, let me try this on triplanar and see, because there was a little edge there that it was, was not working for me. This is much cleaner right there. Much better. And I might actually darken this metal even more. Uh, let's go to the aging. And yeah, let's bring it down even more. There we go. Oops. So if you accidentally grab this like I just did and you want to get it back perfectly straight, uh, so I'm holding uh, Alt and left clicking on it, you can hold Shift at the same time and snap it at 90 degree increments. Just 
just to get it back. Sometimes you'll move over there accidentally when you're trying to move this, and yeah, it just happens. Let me go back into my edgeware. And let me see if we can get just a little bit more wear on that. Oh yeah, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Perfect. So with that, we can go ahead and just, and we're just going to group these together. Since we're not going to use the metal for anything else, and we'll go ahead and add a mask onto this one. And we'll take all these out. Just like that. Oh, and that I believe is the front. One of these is the front. Is this one. And that, I believe, is that. This is the back, I believe, of the barrel. Perfect. So most everything here is metal. And then we just have this plastic barrel here. And for the plastic, I'm not actually going to use plastic. I'm going to use the painted, uh, the spray painted metal. This one here. this copy mask face mask and invert it so I'm gonna use that just because it uh, in my opinion I have a lot of plastics uh, SLS plastics stuff like that and I don't really look as plasticky as I like uh, another really good one I have is the roller painted metal that one looks really nice as well but for now, we're going to use this one. We're going to use the variation on it. So uh, let's go ahead and just set up some of the parameters on this. We'll give it a cool color. Uh, something a little different. Let's go. Uh, let's go more into the yellow. Like this. There we go. And let's get rid of some of the parameters that we don't really want. So there's like a lot of splotching here. Uh, I don't really want those. I am going to put the roughness variation up a bit so we can get some more of that. Uh, let's see if you can really see it. Yeah, so you get a little bit more of that flat spots. And you might actually bring the roughness down a little bit more since it's plastic. There we go. That's better. Let's go ahead and get rid of the airbrush intensity. We'll get rid of the drops intensity. Uh, drop paint. Uh, no hair. We don't need dots. We don't need any of these. And I think that'll do it for us. Yeah, I like that. So now we can just grab this one. And control D to duplicate it go into here and let's actually take out all of these and we'll just put a little tip on the barrel so it's a pretty simple way to do it bring this one back in grab this one make it the color we want it to be so we'll do Kind of a dark pastel color like that awesome so one of the cool things that we can do here we're going to just go ahead and reuse these uh spray painted metals like we were earlier on this and this and we can use that for a lot of our plastics so let me grab this one here we'll see it and we'll just go up to our funnel Control V it. Go ahead and take off. Uh, yeah, we'll take off all of this. Delete that one. Remove the mask, and then we can get get us a nice dark plastic PVC type color. 
and we'll take off. Uh, no, we'll leave the height on, bring the normal up. Let's go ahead and add our hair into this one because it'll give it a little bit more of a... We can add a lot of hair to give it just more texturing and not really hair. So we can move the hair up. And there we go. A little bit more like that. And let's go ahead and bring our roughness down. There we go. All right, that'll work for us. So we're set up on these so far. We got quite a bit of this done. I am going to go ahead and drop in on our wires because our wires is just basically going to do the rubber, Vulcan, vulcanized rubber. And they're pretty much done after that. So we can drop vulcanized rubber on here. One thing we do want to do with this though is we have some battery terminals down here and we want to figure out which one we can use. So we're going to add a white mask. We're going to duplicate this uh, vulcanized rubber and we're going to take this one and we're going to make it a dark red. Something about right there like that. And let's go ahead and I believe it was This one. No, we're gonna use the other side. All right, cool. So we're gonna do a black here and grab this one here. Bring that, all of these in. So we have this red here. And we can just copy the mask like we normally do. Go down to this one, go ahead and paste into mask and we will invert like so and that'll just give us our red and you know what, let's bring up the red just a little bit make it a little bit brighter there we go. so now we have a red and black just to give it our positive and our negative there perfect all right Oh, one thing I did forget, let's uh, go ahead and deal with this box here. So one of the changes that I did make for the UVing on this particular box on the base is you'll notice uh, they actually unwrap very small. So I just use these centers here to uh, put them in uh, the whole box. And this is the actual face for the dial here or whatever you want to put in there. And I made that as big as I could so I could put a large texture on it and it would uh, keep all of that information so it would be really crisp and clean and we're gonna actually we're gonna group all this together like so and let's see which ones we want to get rid of let's um yeah let's go ahead and just add a white mask to that Go to the mask, go to black, and we're going to remove pretty much most of this for right now. And then we have the bezels down here, which we can leave those for now. We're not really going to, that's not going to be much of a big deal. We are going to grab these though. That's just the side plates there. And I'm missing one. Oh, there, oh, there it is, right there. All right, so that just separates our box out. And now we can go and grab, let's see, I have a um, panel and I have some instrument panels here. And this is so small, it's really not gonna matter much, but I'll just go through it real quick just to put it on there. So these are actually for airplanes. These are actually for airplanes, but uh, we can use them for Pretty much whatever, just to get us a nice texture set up. So let's go to our, let's move over here to this one. 
And let's try and find us a gauge that we like. Um, there's one here. Uh, flaps, I believe. That one works fine too. Let me go ahead and rotate this. Hold down shift to rotate by 90 degree increments. And we'll grab that one there. Pull that up and just kind of center it the best we can. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. I should have went ahead and rotated the whole thing like so. There we go. That's much better. So now we can gauge it right here, get it where we want it to be. I like that. That'll work for us. And we'll just go ahead and add a mask to this one. And we'll just do that part right there only. And now we have another one we can use. Let's go ahead and grab this one and bring it out. And we'll scale this one down quite a bit. Bring this one out here. So we have our front face here. Let me go ahead and go 90 degrees on it. I think that's the right, yep. So now we can just kind of look around and see if we can find something we like. Whoops. So the one I used is, oh, that one looks nice too. Where was it? This is the one I used right here. So we can just grab that one there. Go ahead and make it a little bigger. I like that. Then we can go into our, I'm gonna go to repeat, just make that none. Go here, add a black mask, and we can paint in what we want to show up. Much like so. Let's go ahead and change. Use a bit. Make this a somewhat hard edge. See if I can. Yeah, let's do it like that. Go ahead and just put all this in there for now. And just get rid of everything else that we had. Typically I would be using my tablet for this, my Wacom. Let's go ahead and add all this back in.
and we'll paint some of this out that we don't want. over here that we had. Get all this back in there. Yeah, that works fine. That'll work for us. Yeah, it just gives a little bit of variation there for getting some stuff in. Um, I got spot right here. There we go. Alright. So, that just gives us a little in there. Uh, a lot of these edges and everything are gonna clean up a lot when we get our dirt and dust put in there. And like I said, this one tire here is just gonna get duplicated from this tire. That's not even gonna be in there. It's, we're only gonna do one model. And let's go ahead and we're pretty darn close, so let's just go ahead and finish up these motors. And the motors are a little bit more challenge. Because we have to deal with all the straps. So we're going to actually do the aluminum on this one. Aluminum pure. Go ahead and drop that in. We'll add a black mask to that. And the aluminum pure, we're going to actually uh, grab all of these. here let me make sure I have them all and yeah, we're gonna need the ties and the ties are all the way up here and we'll bring all those into aluminum yep that should do us and now we can go and go ahead and add in our uh, our painted uh, you know what we're gonna do oh no we don't use the roller uh, yeah let's go ahead and use this one uh, we're gonna make this pretty smooth on this paint roughness pretty high Variation pretty low. Airbrush, we're gonna take down all of the things that we are gonna leave a little bit of peeling paint, but not a lot. Let's see if we're getting any. There we go. Just a little bit. Ooh, that's too much. To, uh, let's go ahead and click this one onto triplanar. And I am going to need to save this as well. Alright, yeah. So we want some peeling paint, but we only want a little bit on this. I don't want too much everywhere. Not that high. Let's go to about a four. And we'll bring up the peeling paint a little bit more. too much on this. Uh, I'm not sold on the triplanar either. That's better. All right, 
right, yeah, we'll just go ahead and leave it like that. And we do want to take out the aluminum. So let's go ahead and copy this uh, mask and paste it and invert. Like so, that'll get our silver back up again on those straps. But now what we can do is we need to decide on a color. And I do think I'm going to keep this uh, similar to the other one I have. Uh, I have created so far, which was kind of a dark bluey color like this. Maybe a little bit more. I like that. And let's see. Um, we are going to keep this on the white side for the edges here. But what I do want to do is get this a little more shiny. Yeah, about like that. Maybe add in the variation, but keep it kind of on the shiny side. Perfect. Alright. So let's go ahead and... We will add in our middle, and this one will do more like a galvanized, uh, actually the steel rough looks really good too, but uh, I am going to do, yeah, let's do this one, and we'll bring this one down here. Go ahead and copy this one. And paste. Alright. That just brings back our real shiny straps. I don't want to put anything on those. I want those to stay nice and shiny like they are. And this will give us our setup so we can add our... We can go ahead and just group this top one. Add our white mask in and go ahead and add a generator and put our edge wear. And we'll have to invert it. And that'll give us our edges. And I don't really want a heavy edge wear on this one. I will add some grunge though. Probably about like that. I want these to be too heavily worn. Let me bring my curvature down a little. There we go. Yeah, I like that better. Uh, let's back up real quick and see what it looks like with the whole shebang here. So we have, um, I think. Okay, no, that is metal. Kind of looks like it was using the same color there. Yeah, that's good. That'll work. Perfect. Alright, so, so far, we have this about halfway there. So I'm going to go ahead and call it uh, for right now. Uh, on the next one, we'll go ahead and finish this whole top piece. Get this battery done and then start uh, get the basket as well and then we'll start adding in all of our dirt textures which really brings everything together and uh, do a little bit of ambient occlusion uh, we already have some on there when we do the ambient occlusion maps you can actually see them on the edges here but we'll add a little bit more to that and then the dirt textures as well which will really bring everything together so for that right now actually let me go i don't like that barrel tip color it is uh, yeah let's just keep it in the red for warning yeah I like that 
So yeah, that should do us. All right, so on the next one, we'll go ahead and finish those up and we'll get those dirt textures in. And then we should be done with our texturing uh, for this. And we'll go ahead and export everything out and then uh, get it into Unreal and start putting in all the blueprints for it and make it work. All right, so I'll see you guys on the next one.